Okay, so here are some of the setup instructions for the experiment that you're going to do, which is the effect of sugar concentration. So, and it is just regular sugar, right, that you're using. Uh, you don't have to have a giant bag like that. If you just have little packets, that's fine, but you'll have to provide the sugar. And it's the effect of sugar on yeast cell survival and replication, or what we call growth. So cells dividing to become more cells, we call cell growth. And so we're going to count the number of cells. Uh, and we're going to count living versus dead cells to find out if one treatment helps the cells survive better uh, than another. And then in addition to that, if it helps the cells speed up their rate of cell division, we'll, we'll also figure that out too by counting numbers, right? So there's really two parts to getting this lab going. And, and first one is just setting it up. And then secondly, it's collecting the data. So you're going to be using your little microscopes, uh, hemocytometer counting slide, and the little stage uh, that we have with the mirror in it to, to see the cells and count them. And that's going to be a separate set of instructions I'm going to do. Uh, this is just going to be setting it up. This uh, For this experiment, you're going to have a written set of instructions. Uh, there'll be slightly different versions of this. Uh, and as I'm talking about this, since it's very similar for a few different courses, but modified. There's a, a non-majors course running this, but you're not doing as many um, treatments. You're just going to have uh, no sugar and sugar treatment. The biology majors will have no sugar and then two different concentrations of sugar. Right? So just pay attention to your very specific instructions for your course. You'll also have a little quick guide um, like this provided. All these things will be in Blackboard for you with the lab. And you should have them before you start doing this. Uh, and it's going to tell you what you need, what, what equipment, and how to get things set up and give you a little vis visual reference to uh, everything, and how, how it will look. Right. So you're going to need your test tube rack. You'll need uh, three of these uh, centrifuge tubes that are graduated. They have uh, the volumes marked on them. You're going to need in here the yeast that was provided for you. And the yeast is really just the same as baker's yeast that you would buy in the store. And if you're in the non-majors course, you are going to have to buy more of this. So this yeast that's provided is enough for the biology majors course for this experiment. Uh, if you're in the non-majors course, you're going to be doing additional experiments with yeast fermentation. So you're going to need to go out and purchase more yeast. This is not going to be enough, uh, the little little container we gave you. So you're going to have to get some more of it. But it is a you know, edible, um, harmless uh, organism that is going to turn into live cells that we're going to be able to look at. And then we're going to have a dye, a methylene blue. You're going to use this for vital staining of the cells. That means that um, dead cells will take up the dye and live cells will not be stained. I'll explain a little bit more about that later when we get to that part. So what we want to do is get this set up. So go to your instructions. You got a little bit of a background. Then you're going to have details. You have both have written details here. And you're going to have visual details in this. So kind of showing you this tube goes into that tube. So I'd say use them both. Don't just use one or the other. Start off with, you're going to need to put, uh, I already had to redo this. Um, so I already relabeled these things. One tube, you're going to have to add 45 milliliters of water. That's the first thing. So I recommend getting a jug of spring water to do this. Try not to use your tap water if you can avoid it because it can have salts in it or iron or different additives that will throw off this and other experiments that you're doing in this class with osmosis experiments and plant growth experiments and a whole variety of things. If you just have a jug of spring water, that one jug will probably last for most all the work that you're doing. So the graduations, you're going to read them. Try to hold it up toward eye level. Pour your water. Get it to the 45 mark. Get as close as you can. You are going to have a little pipette, or you have several pipettes in your kit, and then you can use some of the pipette if you want to be extremely precise and get it to the exact amount. You can do that to add it dropwise to get there. So that's the first thing, is just to one of these containers, add the water, and now you're going to add yeast to the water. So get your little tube here. If you have a digital balance, so some of the sections of this course are doing a variety of things where you're weighing things out and you're provided with a digital balance, you're going to weigh out 0 0.12, that's in the instruction, 0 0.12 grams of the yeast. And then you're going to put that in here. You'll have a, a little weigh boat to do that. If 
you do not have the little digital balance and weigh boat, you're going to have to use this little scooper. So to use the scooper, what you're going to do is just kind of sprinkle the yeast into it until the bottom is covered. You don't see pl the plastic of the spoon here. And that's it. You, you do not want to pour anything more than that in here. It's a very, uh, well, you can see this is a very tiny amount uh, in there. And that's all you really need. So now we'll dump the yeast into the water. Make sure you screw it tight because you're going to be turning it upside down. And it'll leak out otherwise. Mix it up. Now what you'll do is you're going to pour a third of this into each of these containers. And that's that would be 15 milliliters. So caps off of these. Look at the graduation marks on it. So where you find the 15, that's where you're going. That's where you're filling it to. So if you have any yeast sitting here on the bottom, make sure you shake this or else this container will have far more yeast cells to begin with than these and it'll throw off your results. So make sure it is well mixed. And there's nothing sitting on the bottom when you invert it and then you know you're ready to pour. Okay. So now I'm gonna take this, I'll hold it toward you. Normally this would be facing, normally you'll have the numbers facing yourself, but I'm gonna let it face the camera so that you can see pouring in here to get up to 15 milliliters. Holding it up to eye level is a good idea. Now if I overfilled here, which I did, um, I can either pour it back or I could pour a tiny bit into the next. I'm gonna be pouring into that one. I'm right at 15 there. Now I need to get this one to 15. And perfect. Okay, they're both perfect. 15. So put these down. That's the first part. So now you have water with yeast in them, 15 mils in each. But now we want to dilute this back up. So I, I, I tried this out a few times um, to see what concentration of yeast cells we need. And most of the things I was doing were having way too many yeast cells to start with. So by doing this dilution, you have a reasonable number that you can actually count. And then if they do grow, they're not going to be, you're not going to be so overwhelmed uh, with the counting that you're going to have to do. So now I'm going to fill each of them back up to 45. So I'm just going to pour water in here. Again, you can do this just from a water bottle or any container you have at home with your spring water in it. and 45. And again, if you slightly overfill, you can use your pipette, um, but just remember um, that you try to keep them all as close to 45 as you can. So invert each of these just to make sure it's well mixed. And then we're almost there, but we're not quite done setting it up yet. So the, the next thing we're going to do to set it up is to each container, we're going to add the methylene blue. So methylene blue has a negative charge. Living cells will typically have uh, negative membrane potential. So that means the inside environment of the cell is more negatively charged, partly because of them pumping positive ions out and partly because many of the molecules in the cytoplasm of the cell carry negative charges. So, especially on different functional groups. So, like fatty acids have a acidic you know, functional group, and nucleic acids, uh, and amino acids. So, a lot of these things have negative charged parts. Many things are positive charged, but if you add them all up, it's a little more negative. So, the negative dye repels from a living cell to sustain it. If it does get in the cell, the living cells have active transport pumps and they could pump the dye out. And some living cells have enzymes and they can break down the dye so they don't take up a color. When you see them through your microscope, they're not going to be colorful. The dead cells lose that charge. They just become equal with the environment around them. And so the dye will go into the cell. There's nothing actively that's going to move the dye out. So there'll be a dark blue color. What you're going to do is open up your little container here. Take up some of the dye in your dropper. Add two drops. One, 
two, two, one. Put a little bit more here. Two. Anything extra, put it back in there. Rinse this out because you're going to use it again in other, other experiments. Cap it, mix it, and then you should label it. You should get a marker and label this one just water. Water plus yeast. So water plus yeast. And that's all that's in here, and that's all that's going to stay in here. Nothing else. This one is going to be water, sugar, and yeast. And the yeast was 0 0.5 grams. So make sure you put like 0 .5, 0 0.5 grams on this. That was the half of the little measuring spoon. We didn't do that yet, right? So we, I forgot one part of this, okay? I jumped ahead. So right now, they're exactly the same. They, and that's okay you could, if you do it in this particular order. Um, so this is going to be yeast, and then it's going to be sugar. I'm messing this up because I just uh, filmed these instructions, and then there was no volume. So I'm refilming them uh, again. So the first one is totally done. It is just yeast plus water. That's it. That's all that goes in there. And you have the methylene blue dye. They all have the methylene blue. These two are going to get sugar if you're in the biology majors course, right? And if you're in the non-majors course, you're just going to uh, do one. You're not going to do all three with sugar. You'll have, you'll have all three, but you're only going to use two of them for the future, future measurements. You're not going to have to do quite as much uh, work as the biology majors would have to do. So what you're going to do now is add sugar. If you have the digital balance with your course, you're going to weigh the sugar. So the first one will get 0, 0 0.5. So this one has no sugar. This one has 0 0.5 grams, and this one will get 1 whole gram. If you can't weigh it out on a digital balance, then you're going to use your little scooper. The little scooper here, I measured this out myself with the same balance that you have. And if you have the scooper, half full. So try to be as close as you can to estimate that it's halfway. So half with nothing in it, half full of the sugar. I weighed it out. It's, it's basically 0.5 grams. Very close to that. So dump that in the first one. The second one gets one gram. Okay, so just that's, that's one full little spoon. Again, what sugar are you using? This is just, this is sucrose, first off. Uh, and it is just regular table sugar, so that's all you'll need, and you'll need this for some other experiments too, so just make sure you have some uh, handy. Mix this really well. Make sure it's dissolved. The order in which you add these things has to be, the yeast has to be added first to the first tube, and then you do the dilutions. Then you're going to add dye to all three of them, and then two of them, depending on your class, or just one, will get sugar. Okay? Uh, the order in which, if you add the dye last, if you add the sugar first and then add the dye, it won't, won't matter. No, it's not going to make a difference. Okay? But, so you can follow it exactly how I did it, and it'll be fine. But if you did the sugar first and then add the dye last, it won't, wouldn't really change anything. The key is here is really make sure that sugar is dissolved there shouldn't be anything sitting on the bottom. If there is, you need to keep inverting it until you see that all the granules. Otherwise, the bottom is going to be super concentrated. There's going to be less sugar up here, and it's going to affect your results. So that is going to be the end of the first part, which is setting up the experiment. The next part is going to be where you're going to let it sit for periods of time. So first off, an hour's worth of time. Come back. During that hour, get your microscope set up and ready to go, and then you'll be ready to um, take your first measurement, or which is recording the numbers of cells per milliliter. Uh, and then you're going to wait a full day. So you're going to come back then a day later, and you're going to, this is all done, but you're just going to take a sample from this, put it on the slide, and count it. And then you're going to do that, clean everything up, and then you're going to do it again uh, 24 hours later, so a second day. So it's going to be Today, when you set this up, you'll take a reading, and you'll take another reading tomorrow and the day after that. 
And then you'll have numbers that you can compare for, did the sugar really help the cells grow and divide and survive? Is there maybe too much sugar that it hurt them? Are they fine without the sugar? Maybe they didn't really need, need the sugar at all. So this is sort of what we're testing in this experiment. And you're going to actually have numbers of cells. You're going to be able to can tell, tell live versus dead cells and then count sort of a total number. I'll go over the microscope in a se separate explanation. This is now just the experiment with sugar, effective sugar on yeast cell survival, um, the setup for that experiment.